Hey, I want to invite you guys, if you've been listening to this podcast and enjoying this content and are passionate about protection, you should know that we have an entire library of all of the protector symposiums that we've ever done uh, hosted at protectornation.com. You can go there and you can download those and you can watch every protector symposium we've had to date there online and you can learn protection tactics from the most, some of the most elite trainers in the world from the comfort of your own home. I think you'll be surprised about how much content we actually have there. Uh, It's very, very, very reasonably priced and you can upgrade your protection skills. Remember, protection is not all about the hard skills. 90% of it is all about the software, the programming, the way you see and move in the world to achieve a safer pattern of life. With that having been said, go to protectornation.com, join us there, and learn from the best of the best. Now, enjoy the show. Boom, hello and welcome to the Protector Nation podcast, a podcast that is dedicated to making the world a better place, making the world a safer place by making good people dangerous. In this podcast, we're going to study and understand what it takes to protect, to protect your family, to protect your loved ones, because we all know that you have a few basic needs, food, water, and shelter, but you also have the need to protect those things in a world and society where evil runs rampant and is sometimes left unchecked. Learning how to protect yourselves and your loved ones is becoming more and more important. And so we strive to raise the level of accountability to those who would do evil on this planet by making sure that the sheep, that the flock, is more well versed in protecting themselves and their loved ones. If that sounds interesting to you, then sit back and enjoy the show. Out. Oh, what's up guys? This next episode is me and Rudy Reyes talking. He's a first battalion reconnaissance guy. I think a lot of you guys already know. You should know who he is. Uh, look up Once Upon a Time in Iraq, look up uh, Generation Kill, and most recently take a look at the Special Forces TV show that's been out. Uh, Rudy's been doing some awesome things on that side of the house, but also, you know, he's had a career with a lot of experience, man. He's a good dude and someone I wanted to listen to uh, that's really traversed a lot of things that, well, have destroyed many of us. So this conversation is amazing and shout out to his wife, Jade. They're amazing, um, amazing people. And uh, uh, the, in this episode, I think there's something for absolutely everyone. It took a turn that I did not expect. So sit back, relax and enjoy. Boom. When I was younger, um, I uh, utilized discipline to focus my life into a very simple way to mm-hmm. mitigate uh, struggles and and. Um, in a really tough upbringing and the lack of having a, uh, an adult or parental structure or any kind of structure and being poor, I just made a very simple life and used discipline. And that got me a long way, brother. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the Marine Corps, which gave me an honest place to compete and rewards aggression and discipline. So that was fantastic. Again, actually a simple life. and. I, I didn't know much of the world except as it had to do with combat, mm. but um, uh, there was parts of my life I, I just had n- never really developed. I had no desire to understand money or to uh, be involved in business. I had no desire to understand greed or understand providence. Mm. I didn't know how to receive that. Ex- see. If you can't understand power and money, yeah. then you can't understand what can be um, good with it and, and how it can liberate. Yeah. You that, know, I, so yeah. I had, uh, and I don't know if Jade shared this with you, but due to her influence and her support, mm-hmm. uh, I've got into the faith of Jesus Christ. Woo! And ah. um, it's been a big it gives me goosebumps thinking about it and it's uh it's not something i take lightly it's not Mm. something i say lightly yeah so it's been so so you know brother uh i i had a bomb ass workout today and it was um it was the antithesis of glory it was pure work yeah. It was pure suffering. You know, no, those free. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah uh, you know, I mean, I had a glorious workout today too. And I was just like, yeah, 
Oh, there's yeah. speed. Yeah. It was pure. Amazing. It was pure. Uh, do you know those treadmills that you uh, run? You no. force them. They're a little bit uh, like a banana. And mm-hmm. the harder you push, the faster it goes. It is. Yeah. Um, so it really opens up your hips. And, and, and you're really sprinting, right? Mm-hmm. I, I, I do that for a song. And then over the concept two rower and uh, 500 meters between a minute and 30 seconds and a minute and 45. So wow. you're going, you're yeah. going after that, the assault bike for a song. And I rinse and repeat that four times somewhere on the third circuit, brother, it's getting mm-hmm. spiritual mm-hmm. because legs are, legs are pumped. Mm-hmm. Legs are blown. Mm-hmm. Yes. It, you're no longer uh, fresh. So yep. now you're getting deep. Mm-hmm. Can I maintain? Actually, there's a parable here to yeah. a, a man's walk with Christ and a man's walk with God. There's a parable here. You know, when you're fatigued and the end is nowhere in sight because yep. the immediacy of the pain, the stress, the mm-hmm. struggle is weighing so heavy. The only way to skillfully go forward is to focus deeply in, on the form. Mm. i.e. focus deeply on the faith yeah yeah focus well, deeply yeah. on that and uh and it was just real special and i and i trained outdoors out, out back of sornex yeah. uh, i call it the junkyard the, the factories back there brother it's so wonderful yeah. you know the factory workers come in and out and they're like some legit junkyard dogs oh yeah um we got yeah we got mm-hmm. some um, i i want to say here in Colombia, sornex mm is the biggest factory and the biggest job. Like there's not a lot out here. We're in the South and Columbia. Um, yeah, Columbia. It's, it's South and uh, little restaurants, a lot of fast food places, gas stations. It's got a university and the yeah. economy that drives off of that. But, but there's not, a, it's definitely not as sophisticated like a, a LA, a London, a Chicago, mm-hmm. a you Kansas American, city. Brother. You in actual yeah. America, mom. I'm in actual really real mom. America. And so seeing the brothers coming in and out of the factory, mm-hmm. uh, they're, they're black, white, brown mm-hmm. tattoos. Mm-hmm. Who yeah. knows, who knows if they've come from struggle or I, I know they've come from struggle, mm-hmm. but I don't know what, in which struggle. way, but oh. on the lunch hour, we all, that's when I go to train. All mm-hmm. of us are in the gym together. It's just incredible, brother. Anyway, so I had a wonderful, wonderful session. I'm preparing for this next Special Forces and SAS season, which I can't say where it's going to be, but I will tell you that I'm going to be at 12,000 feet. So I've been conditioning immensely. Yes. So that's kind of, so I, brother, I've never been better. I've never been healthier, never been better. I've I've gone three days without drinking. I mean, I'm I'm just, I'm doing great. That's awesome, man. Like, all right. So you hit so much awesome stuff. (laughs) Let's dig into the Jesus, man. You're a powerful man. You're a powerful man who, you know, if you're like most of us, you don't do things you don't see the utility in, right? That's why we go ultra extreme paths, you know, all this drugs and steroids and stuff i know i did i was like if it don't work playboy look i'm not doing it you know (laughs) (laughs) and and now here i am and i literally drop a video this morning where i'm just like i really tried a lot of things i got a master's in psychology went to that's wonderful brother stuff but like i think you just finding your purpose it's just tied up in your relationship with with your creator man and i just can't find no other way other people do it other ways but i ain't got nothing to give to you but what for you what caused you to, to, to want to make that jump? I think there was so many. I think, uh, obviously, looking back, the Lord had a plan for me and has protected me and provided for me. He's protected me it, it, way before combat. And even though, even yeah. in combat, surreal, the, the, the uh, bullets just missing me and the RPG just misses. And, and I just happened to see the guy that's shooting at it. One moment, you know, uh, before he can reload. And and I happen to have my heavy gun off its T&E so we can go right into him. Mm-hmm. Um, yep. You know, it, it, it was just, and, you know, in the chaos of combat, especially in those early years, uh, there's combined arms and multiple units all over the place. And there's incoming and outgoing. And, and uh, it was just, I don't know. He's always been providing and looking out for me. And it's interesting, my youth, as well, I had a really tough background as a kid, but just able to be in the right place at the right time to try out for track, even though my shoes yeah. were too big yeah. and my skill was so good or my, my heart was so good 
the gym yeah. teacher says, you know, we'll, we'll see if we can get you some shoes. And then yeah. when I go to the Omaha home for boys, the Dean of boys is, uh, is the wrestling coach. And he was an orphan as well. And he grew up there since five. And he taught me morals, brother. I mean, I already had morals from this, from my Marvel comic books, yeah. my Rocky Balboa, my, yeah. my John Rambo. Oh, I, man, had, I miss these guys. Yeah, I had my morals, yeah. but I, but I only saw them on the screen when I met this man, uh, coach Orr, and he, by then had a doctorate. Uh, yeah. he was the Dean of boys and he was a Shriner, a clown. And he would use it and he would clown in old folks homes hmm. and would bring me to do entertainment for old people Wow! and teaching me morals. And when I got privileges in the boys home, I would go be able to leave the boys home and go out into the peripheral neighborhood and mow the lawns and do the lawn care for elderly. Wow. These, and this was a Christian home. This was a, this is a Christian home. And, uh, and we went to church on Sundays. Uh, I got my first church clothes and, uh, and got pride about myself, had a haircut had yeah. my, uh, f- teeth fixed. Mm-hmm. I mean, man, this is just incredible. So all this, this walk has just been leading me there. I think possibly because, uh, I had no mother and father. So it's very hard to think of your father when you've not had a father. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what maybe I'm looking back yeah. now, I'm yeah. wondering if that's it's it, you know, of your understanding of your earthly father in a lot of cases. Yeah. It's like a really organic thing that happens on a subconscious level, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. yeah. And I believe because I took the father role so early with my two little brothers, it's not that I was, uh, I was very attracted to Zen Buddhism because of the martial art and the discipline. And I love the Zen Buddhism as a practice. I still use it to help me sleep from my deep breathing meditation so I can calm my nervous system down. Now I've implemented prayer as well, but sometimes prayer jacks me up. You know, what I mean? it's, it's <laughs> yeah, I yeah. start getting, I get, you know, I get fired up because it just yeah. starts growing. So I use my Zen Buddhism practice just to calm myself down. Yeah. Uh, every time I inhale and I exhale, whatever I'm touching on the bed, yeah. I am put my attention there to get heavier and yeah. heavier. And heavier. So, but the interesting thing about Zen Buddhism is because you spend any time in the Far East, I've spent a lot of time out there. There's a, especially with this communism and social regime. No wonder that grew there so so well because Confucianism is all about duty and levels. Okay. And you will always be tied. And there's some beauty here. You'll always be tied to your ancestors to do right by them, mm. but also there is a almost a a state of bondage that can happen so that you are stuck in a class or caste yeah and you and can. the rich you know the rich stay rich the, uh, there is no middle class and then everybody else is a peasant and why zen buddhism worked so well for them is because it helped them be peaceful with the fact they will, will never be able to strive yeah. do you yeah. know what i mean they'll yeah. never be able to really strive and, um, and therefore there, there's a little less accountability. There's tons of accountability for you. Right. There's little accountability for the world. For anyone up, up the ladder. You get, yeah. Oh, and there's none up the ladder. So, so, you know, it, it was a, it was a growth. And then when I met Jade, yeah. she was so on fire with the faith and I was like, whoa, hold, you know, mm-hmm. also probably because I'd spent so much time in the middle East and yeah. in, in, in Africa and seen such destruction and poverty and and then when i got into the film business myself just such depravity and and fakeness and and plastic and shallowness um it was hard for me to accept such a grandiose and everlasting love like the love of god and 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 she helped me do it by mostly her support we would fight all the time you know what i mean about about spirit the spirituality and 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 I, I guess I still had so much rage and in 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 fear and anger, and uh, but it was her support that helped me yeah. find it myself. Yeah, of course we have our spiritual well, because, warfare Bibles and everything. Yeah. You know, we're we've got our, our Christian uh, icons here in the house, but but it was her support, right? Of of her her motherly and womanly and wife like support that 
allowed me to maybe look into why I'm, I was so sad, fearful, or angry. Yeah. You know, it was the demonstration of love, man. That's exactly yeah. what it is, man. And yeah. It, and it, just, it changed my life. It yeah. changed my life, brother. Yeah. And it, <laughs> it changed my life, too. Our stories are very simul- similar, man. Like, and for me, it was just, you know, the same thing. Like, I just wouldn't be here. I was talking about it this morning. I was like, you know, I would I have I, I, I give you guys freely because I just, you know, it's a gift. I was just a little chubby friend zone, fat kid, run around mm-hmm. dyslexic, like, like just uh-huh. up in the sky. Like, I, I know I'm a warrior, but like, how am I going to matter? Like, how am I going to? I got gotcha. Significance on this planet. How am I going to ever be anything like my, you know, my father who was in another country, but who was a gotcha. great, powerful, aggressive, strong man. You know, I just and God guided me. And I yes. got really lucky because my I looked at, around and there were no male role models for me. But for mm-hmm. whatever reason, going to like Sunday school and Christian, like those younger ages, we established a connection. And I was like, my heavenly father is my father. And that relationship held me over through my life, through everything, through almost dying in Iraq a bunch of times. Through yes. My family's life when I was five years old, because I heard him like he said, go lock your family in this room while they're sleeping. You know, through yes. all out of body experiences, I eventually had yes. grown up and and um, then finally getting to the Marine Corps. And so it was like, yeah, ah, becomes so guided. And, it does, and, and it also gets very crystal clear when you're out of bounds too, doesn't it? Yes, yes. I like that though. I like that. I thrive in. I thrive in boundaries. I respect. I thrive in it. I yeah, accept it. Now. Left, right, lateral limits, and I can just yep, go. That's and- right, brother. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> You know, Brian, uh, Byron, the first time, well, no, that wasn't the first time, but a few, few years back, maybe about four or five years, six years ago at SHOT Show, it was just starting to get it back together. Yeah. Um, and of course, though, I used to have a really hot temper and that's not who I was before the Marine Corps. I and I, I didn't have a hot temper in the Marine Corps either. Hmm. It's just that, but, but we had a switch to use violence. It was when I came out, all of a sudden, my switch went to 11 while everyone else is you know, no, at no, three, no. that's right. And, and, and the dial only goes to 10, but right. my go-to is 11. Yeah, and, yeah. um, and I think we, we were at beyond mm. and there was a, there was a, the party was packed. It was at the hotel. It wasn't at their hotel yet where they just said, we're going to get our own hotel from here on out. But we were at, at some nice suite and it was packed. And then the cops came and oh. we just got there and they were, and they threw us all out. Remember? Mm-hmm. And then I said, I'm not going, you know, <laughs> I am the, I'm beyond spokes model and I'm supposed to be here. You know, Oh man, we're in LA. <laughs> and, then, and then you were, you were, you were sitting next to me, like having a drink at the end yeah. roll and I'm all freaking fuming. And it was Michael Rodriguez that came over and said, hermano, hermano, you know, let's calm down. And then eventually yeah. he took me home. But since then, brother, I have, just really manicured my health more. So it wasn't my character. It's just, I was drinking a lot and doing a lot of hard drugs. I Mm. think, and and only whenever I was not working, I couldn't Mm. handle the silence and the, um, the very deeply hidden shame of Mm. not conducting a life that was bearing fruit. I felt like I was washed up Byron and I felt so useless i was re- i really felt that way and uh in something around when when i started force blue and the next year i meet jade and i just yeah. knew that, you know after the disillusionment of my marriage when after the marine corps mm-hmm. i didn't think i would ever be in love or trust somebody to to go on that innocent like journey again yeah and immediately once i decided we're we're doing this together. And I grabbed her out of her apartment and she moved in. I got us a place in LA. I had my own place in Kansas city. And then I got another place in LA. I didn't care how I was, I was going to afford it. And then knee sir. And then all of a sudden uh, an injury from Iraq that I remember when it popped just a little bit, but when we're young and strong, you can get through anything. You can yeah. get through anything, brother. I think I turned 47 or 48, 48 years old. And then all, and then it started swelling. And then I had a job. I had a history channel show Yeah. and then COVID hit. And then the job and then all of entertainment froze yeah. now, no work. Now I can't mm. uh, personal train to make some scratch for the house and living in LA is expensive as you know. Absolutely. And, um, 
And then I was cut, and, and then I was getting clean off of drugs and alcohol. Yeah. Holy smokes, brother. That's insane. Jade and I, she was there for me. I mean, for a whole year, she was there for me when mm-hmm. uh it took about six months before I could really run again or even run lightly. Wow. Uh and because it takes time to heal, right? That's the hardest feel part. God, yeah, the knee's nothing to mess with. It's strong as hell. Now, uh, yeah. again, another co- God's providence. Mm-hmm. Um, the VA, you can't trust the VA to freaking do something like that. Yeah, you just want to talk. Yeah, don't, uh, you know, you have to write the other leg to make sure that they freaking operate on the right one, right? On the yeah. correct one. <laughs> like, <laughs> real, honestly, though. Yeah, 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 not, yeah exactly. Yeah. Not this one. You got to yeah. write not this one. Not this and one. then on the yeah. other leg, the, uh, you got to point an arrow that says yeah, like the to other the spot. leg. Yeah, yeah, I'm telling tell you. So uh, I was uh, Gunnar Peterson is a dear brother of mine, mm-hmm. and uh, and I reached out to Gunnar. Gunnar reached out to George St. Pierre's surgeon, okay. uh, Doctor Alatrosh. He's the guy that did Kobe's knees as well, like the premier knee guy yeah, yeah, in LA. Yeah, and you know, just a hundred fifty grand or whatever like that. The doctor, doctor said it's it's on yeah, me. The doctors get down, man. <laughs> it's on me, and I'm like, oh, wow. So, so uh, you know, Jade and I are struggling in Idaho. There's the big riots in L.A. We're not safe. The cop car is burning three blocks away from our house. We're down the way from Beverly Hills and Hancock Park. Um, there's uh, Jade's never been to combat. That was her first uh, instance mm-hmm. into combat. She'd never yeah. seen massive riots and things on fire and looting and. And, and uh and gunfire going yeah. off like that you know and i just had that protect uh, protector instinct i said we're getting out of here we yeah. moved to boise idaho it was a little too quiet but that year uh we got it together and it's and cool. then sas called brother and after sas i mean after that show hit brother i've been going non-stop i think i've done five seasons already I just wow. got back from Vietnam. Yeah, I just got back from Vietnam not too long ago for two more seasons. I'm going to another legendary place that you know you know about already. I just can't yeah. put it out there yet yeah, for the yeah. next few seasons. And and I got a I got a little TV career again. So it, again, now. it's it's all because the alignment. It's uh-huh. all because the alignment. Things fall into place when you're in that. And then even when it's time to fight, it's not like your yeah. whole life is wonderful after you fight Jesus. It's not actually what happens. No. Get empowered to do things, to do his will, to move mountains, to live your yeah. purpose, which is hidden inside of him, right? I could yes. I could go deep rabbit hole. But what yes. now, I remember too, like I remember I got back 3-1. Uh yes. right when we got back from our deployment, right after the whole Haditha incident. Yeah, oh yeah. I get back and I see you, bro. <laughs> I yeah, see you yeah. On on uh, what was it, Generation Kill? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Gas mask and all the. Sure. I remember, I walked in and I sit down and I and you know all the homies, all the Marines watch TV together. For sure. Room like drinking, there's like hanging out, you know, and I'm like, oh, it's not like porno because we're watching, <laughs> like we're watching like TV. Yeah. Together. And and brother, it was you know what? Looking all the, it's like 12, 13 years old now. Yeah. It's um, I'm getting more love from it now than ever. And all of it, cause we're all getting older. Well, now and, I can uh, watch it. I couldn't watch it. Yeah. I just, my rack, I couldn't freaking do it. I sat there. I was yeah. like, I was like, this is too realistic. I just, yeah. I'm going to limbo. <laughs> like, I, yeah, I, yeah to- oh, totally, totally brother. Um, totally now I think cause we've got perspective and we're older Thanks. and we are not in fight or flight. Yep. Uh, I get so much love from all forces saying mm-hmm. that camaraderie, the humor. The humor was so uh, on brand. The detail. Awesome. Yeah. The detail, the, the little Tabascos that we had yeah. in MREs, they're all rattling around on top of the fucking Humvee, uh, 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 the, the Humvee dash. Yeah, <laughs> man. The little things, uh, yeah. the, all of that and, and the love and the love and the humor and, and the dark humor it takes yeah. to, um, to mm-hmm. handle doing violence, you know? Yeah. Yep, yep, one hundred percent. Oh yeah, I'm give you a shout out for that. I remember. <laughs> you know, I, it's I going great, brother. Real, and I honestly, truth be told, I think I finally watched the whole thing. Like the like last year, maybe I was. Oh like, really? It's <laughs> really good, isn't it? it is. I just I saw it very, again, and I'm like, wow, we did a good fun. job. I loved it. One of my favorite questions to ask on this joint is yes. always, who's the man behind the work? You know, like we'll, we'll talk a little bit about your, you know, your background, just so everyone knows we kind of didn't do an intro, but 
you know, but like, who are you at your core, man? It was the infamous Rudy Reyes, you know, the mm-hmm. infamous uh, Recon, the guy we see on the screen, Recon. Yeah. They, they're the yeah. demigod looking, you know, what is it? Yeah. <laughs> like, what was it like? You know, you know I, I was I was watching this documentary about uh, the diamond business, which I guess mm. is very, very nebulous. Mm. And the man that was speaking about diamonds is why his mother, when he first graduated high school mm. and he's a, he's in Brooklyn, Jewish gentleman, his mother gave him five thousand dollars in cash. And he's like, Mom, what are you doing this? Why are you giving me this money? We don't even have this money. Because, son, when you walk in to uh, interview for your job and you got $5,000 in your pocket, um, you walk different. Yeah. Um, you talk different. And, and then, uh, and when you buy yourself a suit that's fitted for you, you walk different, you talk different, you are different because there's a value. And son, you need, you need to learn that. And brother, when I recognized probably in, in my teen years, even though I had been training, just watching right. uh, Rocky Balboa, do whatever he does, you know, one arm push-ups, making tons of pull-ups and running, uh, watch the Kung Fu movies, just yep. practiced all the Kung Fu that I saw them doing in the Kung Fu movies. And uh, it, it just always pushing myself yeah. right around 15 or 16 years old. I started getting those muscles, you know, yep. I said, you know what, I'm going to keep investing and in creating this body of work. And although I can't afford nice clothes yet, although I can't afford things on the outside. I'm going to value myself in the inside. And brother, it got me all this way. You got your far, man. That's, <laughs> awesome. that's a sweet idea. Yo, guys, guys, listen, man. Yeah. That's a great one. That's yeah. Great. It don't cost you nothing, man. You can get mm-hmm. the heck outside. You go ahead and do, do what you got to do. Watch what you put in your mouth. And that's push. right. Push. That's right. Well, you know, Brian, uh, Byron, you're a freaking master of it. Throw on some black jeans and a black t-shirt and you got a yeah. freaking hard body you'd be looking good and people see value in that and you want proud right it's a signal that's very difficult to to fake you really kind of can't so these different signals they say things about you and it's studies show your life is better when you're fit and when you're fit you're already halfway to attractive already i mean like when you're yeah that's right it's so true and you know it's interesting like i was a late bloomer when it came to girls and stuff like that but the confidence from self-discipline mm-hmm. uh, and then the self-discipline, Byron, yeah. uh, in my teens and 20s, um, I forewent all of the dating clubs, all of that. Really? I was so disciplined because I was now competing in kickbox, kickboxing and traveling around the world and, um, and training and, and so committed to find the truth yeah. through this discipline because it was treating me so right. Uh, now, of course, we understand some of the science too. When you're training hard consistently all the time, your freaking brain function, your frontal lobe is there, yeah. your circulation is there, uh, your sleep is there because you're truly tired at night. Right. And yeah, you know what I'm saying. And and uh, um, it was it was when those limits had been pushed so 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 far in recon, and then in combat, it pushed yeah. so so far. I can understand as a parable like Luke Skywalker or, or excuse me, Anakin Skywalker turning into Darth Vader, the <laughs> corruption that comes from power. Yeah. From, you yep. know, you 100%. know, and, and I, and it, it, it had corrupted me. I didn't know it, but, yeah. but, but after running operations and doing such dangerous stuff and still and living and thriving in it, and then yep. killing the enemy yep. and, and then, you know, wherever, I mean, we were, wherever we walked, um, mm-hmm. everybody gave a wide breath, so much respect. I, and I, and then when I became a team leader, yeah. there was so much uh, power. And maybe at that time we are doing exactly what we're supposed to be doing. Cause we've got to be some bad mother frappers. Yep. Yep. We got to be the most dangerous cats Right. Uh, not just in the grid square in the whole damn freaking hemisphere, right? 100%. Um, unchecked when I came back, that was still going. I didn't realize it. Yeah. But I noticed that I was harsh and hard to anybody that loved me, 
I had this impossible Marine Corps standard for everybody mm-hmm. and in, to include myself, but I'd already had all of this uh, uh, momentum. What about regular people that have not been indoctrinated and, and been blessed to have some of those very harsh experiences? Right. Uh, and then I, I started turning to drink to go to sleep because I couldn't sleep at night. Yeah. And then I got into the film and television business and it was so much uh, cocaine. Mm-hmm. And um, and that and when I would do hard drugs, that helped help numb and make me forget that I was really, really sad and depressed that I, I didn't really have a purpose. Uh, singing and dancing in front of uh, a, a camera or modeling or whatever, those are jobs, but that's not a purpose. Right. You see what I'm saying? Um, yeah, I know. I know you've been there. I mean, I, I know your testimony. I listened to your your pod and I've heard you speak on some some other things, no, uh, biblical so cool as well. And see how the similarities yeah. that people are getting and taking away, you know, like. There's just so much here to unpack, you know, like, yes, yes. And I love that you do so much men's work. You do so much men's work because it's so needed. And, you know, uh, Byron, a few years back when the men's movement started, maybe it might have been six, seven years ago, maybe 10. It seemed to me when I was looking at it and listening to it so over the top to hyper, hyper masculinity that I believe really only belongs and can be controlled in high-end military units or in high-end combat sports. I would say even more so military units. They're self-correcting. They can yes. Have, yes. Those can bang. They can handle each other. There's yes. Yes. The character that comes from working to those standards. It's all the understanding of who mm-hmm. you are along those levels so that you don't abuse mm-hmm. yourself. Much. And if you do, your brother's right next to you is going to be like, hey, bro, <laughs> you know, yeah, absolutely self-governing, as you said, mm-hmm. uh, self-correcting, self-governing. And uh, there's no way anybody at that elite level can skip steps. You don't know. You cannot skip steps. Mm-hmm. So uh, uh, wherever you look at your um, at your peer level, yeah. you know, everybody their rates and yep. they know you. Rates. Oh. And there's a there's a massive freedom there. Right. Yeah. It's a, um, it's a, it's a, a piece that you have about your pack for sure for sure and then so we were watching this early men's movement come out and they were and they they exalt guys like you and i you know and and our our pararescue our green berets our seals they exalt us they exalt us and and then it seemed that it that it was beginning to be packaged Hmm. and i'm like you know you can do all the shooting and you can do all the fighting and you can do all the freaking hang cleans you want that's not exactly yeah. being that's not exactly being a warrior. Right. The truth is somewhere, somehow, we chose to sacrifice ourselves and serve over to something, sacrifice yep. ourselves. We're not doing things for us. We right. are l- l- sacrificing our bodies and our innocence and possibly our lives mm-hmm. to serve something higher. Right. And and so we, I love that you're bringing full circle back because you speak how important the walk with God and the example of the warrior Jesus and yeah. the walk with God, that there is a hierarchy and yeah. there's a command. There is a freaking, there's a CO brother up yeah. there. And, uh, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta accomplish the mission for the, for, for the grand design. Yeah. Um, not just because, Maybe you f- you might be lacking in some areas, and and you know, um, so. and and doing the tropes as opposed to surrendering and committing. I would mm-hmm. recommend any young man that has an opportunity to surrender and commit to the military. I even if it's just four years, you will learn so much. And it's not about the fighting. You're going to be a nobody. You're going to be a nothing. Mm-hmm. You're going to you're going to grind to be the best just to to get the 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 um privilege to take off your go fasters and put on oh, boots. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, dang. One day boots. you'll get a name tape. Yeah. One day you'll get yeah, you'll blast your boots, then you'll get a name tape. And yeah. then one day you're out there. You remember in the old day we we had to um iron on our insignia onto our, our breast pocket and then we yeah. got the eagle glue. These little things, these rites of passage of manhood, look deep inside. And and if you're and if you're afraid or you don't you can't join the military for one reason or another find a way to join something that is steeped in tradition 
and has a connection to to God and um, ethics, morals, and spiritual uh, um, spiritual weight. That's what I would recommend. And all young men need to get in shape and do martial arts 100%. and understand survival and understand how to use weapons because they are the front line protector of their family, of their community. Every every man out there is the front line man. He yep. is the front line man. So. So that's, that's my recommendation to those youngsters out there listening. That's valuable, man. That's huge. And I love that you pointed out kind of some of the ego imbalance that's in a lot of the masculinity. Mm. And then also mm. about what being a warrior is. It's an elite servant. It's like you can't yes. just walk in this dojo and be like, yo, you're, you're this warrior. You can't just walk into a group, a pack of men that are warriors and be like, oh, I'm a warrior. No, no. You have to train. You have to work. You have to earn. And you get to be yes. a black belt or these yes. ranks. You're an elite warrior. You have to train to be a servant. The warrior is a servant. That's yeah. you just serve yes. in a way that you have to you have to be good enough to, to serve in, in in many cases. Well yeah. said. You have to be good enough to surrender. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's like, great. Yeah, you need to bring honor. something so yeah. good to be yeah. able to surrender to get to the high level. You're just, you're exactly right. Have you had a two lamb on your cast? I haven't, man. I haven't. I got it. Good. I can make the introduction because he is absolutely lovely, brother. He is yeah, absolutely yeah. lovely, and he he lives that bushido, and he yeah. is a a a god warrior as well, and very yeah. humble, extremely well spoken, uh, very professional. That's good stuff, man. No, it's such yeah. a, it's it's very much needed, man. And that's what I want to do. You know, I want to use this platform to just sh- show the right things about. Because that's who's watching. It's all the male yes. men that are watching that want to understand masculinity. They want to understand these guys that they look up to. They want to stand, understand who they are and like what got this guy through a 30 year, 20 year career. You know, yes. what helped, you know, Rudy when he's navigating his life. Like, I'm, and same thing happened to me, man. I got back from my rack, got caught my IEDs, got blown up and stuff. And I was just like, I am now a Lamborghini stuck in a school zone for the rest of my life. Like, I was like, I got to yeah. die. Like, it is like nerf reality. Saw like just well the child proof scissorness of reality. I was like, you can't do it. So I started doing drugs too. I was dropping huh. like 10 pills a night for like a year straight. I was doing wow. all kinds of drugs for, you know, and then I finally was just like, I, my heavenly father was like, you're going too fast. Then I was like, mm-hmm. I gotta, I gotta pivot. And fortunately I didn't have an addiction thing. I was just able to be like, I'm going to die or quit. Boom. And so I just hit flip the yes. switch and went to another state and was like, sat on the couch for a while <laughs> and started rebuilding my you life. Know, you know, Remember brother, me? I don't think I it was, like I think I was addicted to pain or no, I was, I was addicted to my own shame yeah. and I was masking it with, um, with masking behaviors well, Yeah, with uh, it, I, until I found that I can be forgiven and that I am just um, a man, oh, check this out, brother. I, I thought when I was falling apart, yeah, that it was only me and you and everyone else was doing awesome. <laughs> yeah. and the only one that's having a hard time is yeah. me, yeah. you know, and the only one that's really, really down about where he's at right now and yeah. feeling lost is me. And I felt so embarrassed. I didn't know what to do. And now, as we understand, our like, brothers and sisters are all going through, through it, man. Yeah. yeah. That's the human experience, man. And that's why it's so important. You know, even for me, like I'm in wars with giants I ain't never seen before. You know what I'm saying? And I'm sitting there and I'm looking around, but it's so important to be like, yo, you remember when you asked God for this? Like, you remember when you yes. was car you got? You remember when you were like, yo, Father, if you could just give me, or you could just get me through the night, like when you was on post and you were freezing in that record. Oh, like, so true. Night, bro. Like, I swear I'll never do nothing bad again. You know, yeah. and, then he does it, and then you forget. Like, that being able to get into that energy of gratitude, and it sounds so yes. hidden, but it's like one of the most powerful things you can do. It's like real, you know? It so is. I live my life in this state of just thanking him. Um, yeah, brother. And you're so successful too. And I love that. I mean, it's and successful, you know, between you and I is the success that we re, that we're speaking on is uh, alignment bounty in which you provide for family. It feels so free, brother, that I'm not worried about money yeah. and that I don't know how we're going to pay the rent or, or, you know, it feels so good to know that my house is in order and, and it is well in hand. Right. It feels so good. I haven't felt that way since the Marine Corps. Uh, and my Marine Corps life was very small. I was just pointed in one direction. And this is what I did. Now I am, uh, 
you know, like yourself and, and like the two lambs and the, and the, uh, and the Pat McNamara's out there and the, you know, and the Roger Sparks is, we are knights, noble knights and humble Kings, first of our house. Yeah. And, uh, and we do the right thing. Yeah. And, and of course we've got to be successful because we are the only ones out there doing the right thing. <laughs> I know, right? You <laughs> have to win. I remember <laughs> saying the same thing the other day. I was like, when I was, there were times in my life when it was okay to die. Like, it was like, yeah. if I go out here and die, then I die like a man and that's fine. But I was like, I was driving to the gym when I was doing my introspection the other day. I was like, hey, bro, yeah. you can't die. Nah, nah. You have to win. Like, you have to that's win right. this tribe. You have to lead this tribe. Like, you have to be successful. You need to be, we need good people to be potent and formidable and intelligent yes. and powerful in this world. And so. Yes, we do. Like, yes, nah, we do. I, that was when you were a teenager. Now. We got to win, man. I love it. Mm -hmm. Love it. Mm -hmm. And oh. it's interesting. The heavy, heavy is the head that wears the crown. You know, yeah. uh, Zach Brown, my boy, uh, that he wrote that song. With that weight, though, oh, yeah. my footing is sure. Who's my, yeah. With that freaking weight, I have some gravitas to my steps. Yeah. It does not feel, in, I do not feel encumbered. Right. I feel empowered. Yeah. I've empowered to do what you were designed to do. And that's, that's right. Back on what you were saying. Like there have been so many times when it's like, Hey, we got to make rent. We got to make payroll. Mm -hmm. Oh, you just got this new detail. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, totally. Payroll 70,000 more dollars. I don't know what you're going to do. They're net 90 days. So I <laughs> said that they're oh, all brother. Good, good luck. Yeah. 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 Thank you. You, gotta figure <laughs> that out, you know what I mean? So yes, these different things that happen to us, but if you're on the path and you're in alignment, I know he's going to take care of it because he's already yes. taken care of me my whole life. And I yes. literally get to sit back and go, father, this was a gift. You gave me this gift and I know you're going to sustain it. And, and, yes. and literally, and people around me are like, uh, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And I'm like, I'm going to listen. And then I'm going to mm -hmm. start taking action. And, and he's yes. going to start blessing me and guiding me as I move. And that yes. is how it happens. And now, thank God, my wife, my wife is just like, she gets it now. But for the first yeah. while, she was just back there pulling her hair out. Because I'm like, for sure, how we do life. You know what I'm saying? Yes. <laughs> yes. I totally understand, so brother. And she, you know, Jade has been yes. so much more in that space of faith yeah. for so long. And you it wonder. was me being the control free being the team leader that is yeah. you know uh, uh building up his target package and has to make sure the recon is done and he knows yeah. the routes well sometimes you don't know the routes you know, if you're with god you don't know yeah. the you think yeah. you know the route. then godzilla shows exactly. up and goliath and you're just like oh yeah and then you're just holding on while you're, while you're yes taking your, taking yes your and yet and yet byron if i can share with you yeah. i've had a couple of miracles but this last it's funny it can sound I don't know why Christianity right now is getting such resistance. Yeah. Actually, I do know why. Yeah, we. Have. I think I think it had become um, utilized for such uh, corruption for people that wanted to make money or had power with with women or boys or whatever. Uh, I just recently, I've had a few people um, that I have been engaged with with business and the first thing they speak to me is about the lord and god and now i've learned that that's a, that's a red flag and that the first thing uh, we talk about is um uh, deliverable services timelines mm -hmm. and because i'd been manipulated a couple of times yeah, no, and we i imagine that's why it, it had received some bad press for some time i gotta tell you my walk with with God has been nothing but in illuminating, empowering. It is, uh, it, 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 there, there's no stereotype or uh, any kind of trope. It, it is, it's, it's honestly a loving and empowering grace that helps me through some very difficult times and makes me more powerful to create a better world for all of us. Yeah. I was, um, I was on my fourth, awesome. I had four more, thank you, brother. I had four more days left in Vietnam. We yeah. had rain sometimes eight days straight at a time. Wow. Everything had flooded, um, to such a degree that we were having electrical problems and we were f fearful of people being electrocuted. So we had to move our 
our seer portion in our tactical questioning rooms up to these stilt houses. Yeah. Brother, on the parade square, imagine being on the grinder yeah. and it's four feet underwater and fish and crabs. And, you're and I'm far from the sea, brother, but there's <laughs> yeah. so much water. We had wow. fish and crabs running around. So no, I'd been I'd been underwater about three weeks, yeah. and uh, and, you're like, and I had two pairs of boots, and I was switching them out. I, I, but you just could not ever you, really get you, dry. You're like I was doing everything reasonable that I've ever been trained to do. Yes, yes. So on the, on the fourth to last day, the feet. Oh, it yeah. felt like a million mosquitoes were biting me, and then they were swelling. The immersion foot got me. Oh, now, the because uh, I did two seasons, we did one season and a few days off and it was raining. And then the next season and uh, both seasons, uh, we did civilian and celebrity. The um, the recruits that made it to the end were all hospitalized. But myself and the incredible uh, directing staff, um, Foxy, Billy and Chris, uh, we did the do the whole thing and lead the whole thing. So my right, feet, right. brother, the feet. And it was so painful. And I could barely take my boots off. And I, I, I called Jay. I said, honey, I got four more days, but this pain and the swelling is so severe. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I can take another step. It's, and we're tough guys. Yeah, we can handle we're our tough tests. guys. So, you I know, it was bad brother. Yeah, and we, I, you know, I got to make this 90 grand. You know what I mean? You got to make it look sexy too, boy. You gotta, <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, I can't be what, you know? <laughs> So, brother, uh, I sat down, uh, I, I kneeled down on my rack in our little barracks, me, me and the DS. I freaking got on my knees and put my <laughs> elbows on my bed just like when I was six years old. Yeah. I prayed, Jesus, Jesus, please help me. I need help. I yep. can't do it my, myself. Please help me. I don't know what I'm going to do. Mm -hmm. Brother, the next day, the pain was gone. Wow. The swelling had come down. Wow. And Billy, who is my idol, SAS, 22 years, Paris, 10 years before then, been there, done that. Brad and Angelina's bodyguard, uh, Sean Penn's bodyguard. I mean, this, this cat this has been there, done that. And he's agnostic as fuck, you know, bitter. Actually, he's not bitter. He's the funniest man in the world, but he does not want to admit that hear. there's miracles. Yeah. yeah. And, uh, and so the next day I get up and he and he says something to me like, Hey, mate, I think I saw your friend walking through here last night. And I said, yeah. And he goes, good job, mate. My fucking feet were good. Wow. I, 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 they eventually, uh, uh, I, I had to take a lot of time off when I came home. Yeah. For those next four days, I was a champ. And that was all from God and from Jesus looking after me. And I swear I was on my knees praying because I, I needed I to complete know. this mission. And I needed to bring, bring home the money for our family to provide for us. And I needed, and I need this this career because I, now at 51, it's the resurgence. I have to make it, but I couldn't do it on my own. So I just prayed and there and we go. <laughs> That's, how it works, dude. That's how it works. And it's scary every time, but he ain't let me. Yeah. Know. You know yeah. Really beautiful. That's really beautiful. Right. We got a loving father up there. That's amazing. That's amazing. Yeah, uh, brother. The other thing I think that was really good that you mentioned, and then we'll hit the close, closing questions here was, sure. uh, Finding your new fight. You know, you said you had a job, but you didn't have a purpose. You know, I really yeah. like to drive that home. I talk about yeah. us military cats. We have, we build out such an amazing engine. We do things people can't do. We outperform mm -hmm. other grown men in combat, live out there like animals. We do all this, but we get back and the atrophy of identity, who we created, it atrophies in this comfortable environment. It gets rusty. And then- so true. We, we fail when in all actuality, we have the gear, the internal gear to be some of the most successful individuals in our society. We can outperform people. Um, and so I love that you said finding your purpose, man, that finding that yes. new thing you can pour yourself into and, and being in alignment. I, I really think that's what saves lives, man. I, I, yes, brother. And you know, this, um, this uh, ve veteran transition, Yeah, I believe through adaptation right right we hold on to the essence of the warrior things that gave us pride and self-respect yep. and just adapt them to this new world and leave it a bit more inclusive for people who have, who have not been as fortunate to walk in our boots right. and serve their country like we did to leave it a bit inclusive for them so that they can come in too 
I think that adaptation, you know, this, this, uh, brother shot show is fantastic when it's all of us and our brothers and friends, brothers. And our, yeah. but then there's so much sometimes negativity no and, 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 uh, tough guy, uh, and bullshit because it's, they're, they're not really, t- <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I know exactly. Cause they're I'm sitting there minding my business. Guy walks up to me. Hey, I don't remember his actual name, but he's like, Hey, I'm Jeff, Navy SEAL, eight years. What's your name? And I'm like, uh, Whoa. Scared, yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Like, we still hang out. Like, is we going to be all right? Yeah. <laughs> we we got to get t shirts printed with our SRBs or something. Yeah, you or, know. you know, I don't get it. But and, and you know, it's awesome. Yeah. And, and that's, and that's where uh, I think it, it, we turn people off when we're that way. 100%. And, um, and there's no room for growth for our community, too. Um, so, so let's remind our brothers out there, our badass fucking warrior brothers, yeah, leave man. the door open for people, leave it open for them. And, um, and who knows, they could teach you some things too. Like I've, mm-hmm. I've been learning from your talks and, awesome. uh, and listening to other people uh, that are now entrepreneurs, that are you, all of you entrepreneurs that run your own business. I listen to all of you and I am applying those things and I'm learning and, and I, I listen to people with expertise that um, that illuminate my life. Oh, it's, yeah. it's you'd be surprised, br- a veteran brotherhood and sisterhood out there. You'd be surprised with some of these uh, intellectual cats or very seasoned cats in the world of, of finance and business can illuminate for you, and it will really be a force multiplier. I yep. recommend it to everyone. Getting yep. an accountant, I recommend everybody at Baseline LLC. If yep. not, then the freaking C Corp. All right. Yep. And now getting your accountant. And if you can then get a, a, a lawyer on retainer, especially in the entertainment business, because you got to look at contracts. I know it's upfront investment. Trust me. At the end of every year, what you get back uh, or what you don't have to pay in taxes. Right. And knowing that you're driving economies for people you trust. You pick your team. Yeah. The state is not giving you your team. You pick your team. 100%. This is the ultimate freaking small unit leadership, baby. Oh, no, yeah, this is the actual game. Like, I don't even. <laughs> you're, you're, you're tough, and you don't get this stuff. You're a casualty. Like, like, yeah, brother. Good enough to just be tough anymore. You have to understand these things and yes, create sir. opportunities and business and your your financial strategy and your legal strategy and yeah. your strategy and your branding. Yeah. Dude, we just have to be masters of these things if we're going to be potent yeah. and effective. I love it, man. That's real stuff. Thanks, uh, brother. And then uh, what would you say is your favorite quote, mantra, saying? You start to wind down. When I wake up in the morning. Uh, do you remember that Kings of Leon song? Yeah. My sex is on fire. Yeah, of course. Is on- I go, I wake up and I go, yeah. Is on fire. <laughs> and I just start right there. Yeah, and then yeah. I start pacing through the house. And I start do 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 ba da ba ba. I drink the coffee, pet the dog, play with the cats, kiss the wife, start pacing around. All right, here we go. She's just wrapping up with the Bible. I say, thanks, Jesus. I start that freaking movement. And brother, it just opens up and leads to the rest of it, an amazing day. That's how I started. Get fired up about yourself because yeah. you matter. Yeah. Get, get in state, get in state yeah. for your day and do it. Make it a thing you're able to get yourself into. Uh, there's a lot of wisdom with regards to emotional intelligence of what you're talking about, man. Being able Thanks, to- Thanks, brother. We got to hang more. I can't wait to do another job with you, whether yeah. we're doing video games or movies or just get to hang. Uh, Jade and I will be in LA soon. Uh, I've got some mm-hmm. meetings with Fox and stuff out there. Let's get together. I'd love to learn because my uh, Dr. Jordan Peterson is one of my favorites. Oh, I listen to him every day, and and I and psychology, anthropology, yeah. and socio religio anthropology is absolutely fascinating, and yeah. it's the truth. There's, there's so much, there's so much to, it's like, it's like the ocean. We've only explored like 20% of it, you know, but there's so yeah. much one. Ha- well, you just kind of gave us a habit. Let's say, how would you like to be remembered, Rudy? What's it all for in the end? You know, I'm halfway through my life. I think I'll make it to one Oh two. Thank you, brother. I feel freaking <laughs> great, brother. Um, legacy is on my mind every day because also to our older brothers and sisters out there, 
I also battle arthritis. Yeah. Really? I also batter, battle tendonitis. Yeah, because I still have to push myself so hard to be able to do some of the things I do. I mean, now I, now I need reading glasses when I oh, read. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, we all take a turn. We all take a turn. You know, just, but the you legacy the is, for, you yeah, legacy is on my mind every day. I want to, uh, maybe this is ambitious, quite simple. I want to make a name for the Reyes family. Because we come from, from uh, migrant workers and gangbangers and um, men and women that struggled just to make ends meet in broken homes. Yeah. I want to make a name for the Reyes family wow. in which I have children in my life, that I make a difference for families and that I change, in a sense, the DNA of my family for eternity. That's what I want. I really do believe yeah. That is what uh, I was here to do: is to, to, to change epigenetics, change the genes, yep. so that we start coming together for God in family, and we love one another instead of hurting one another. That's what I want to do. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. The family line, and then there was Rudy. You know, and then yeah, you know, <laughs> you know, like I'm right. Yeah, there. right. <laughs> I want like everyone to be at a reunion years from now, and they're all like, yeah. they're like, well, how do we even like? You know, it was like, yeah, I mean, the Rogers household was like this. And then that bio exactly shack, imagine you know? like 300 years from now, they're yeah. talking about great, great grandfather, mm-hmm. freaking devil dog, legend, freaking yeah. Byron, our war hero uh, and, and and then warrior for home and family and uh, and and creator of uh, of wealth and creator of possibility and in industry. And now these your your your, uh, your children's children's children are just vibrating at that righteous level. Yeah. That's my goal. That's a hundred percent a worthy endeavor. And the Bible says a righteous man leaves an inheritance for his children's children, man. And that I'm oh, right brother. there with you, man. I'm oh, so brother. For his children's children. That's that's the that's the goal. Good stuff. What are you up to these days? Where can people find you, man? Okay. Well, I'm just gonna make Jade laugh too. I just got verified on Instagram. Ooh, I gotta get verified. I don't know if they'll let me do it, but brother, gotta... it yeah, it's been uh, uh I mean I've been trying for years and right. I don't know what's going on. I think Congratulations. um yeah, I guess it's just needed to happen. You can find me on Real Rudy Reyes. I have a website for all professional inquiries, uh talks, movies, things like that. Um but you'll find me wherever there's physical culture and extreme challenge. You will find Rudy Reyes there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, you just check out just, uh, you know, Byron, you're, I think you're the same. You uh, uh, Google Byron Rogers and you're yeah. the first freaking face that comes up. I'm the first Rudy Reyes that comes up. You guys can find me. Check out Force Blue, forcebluteam.org. I rebuild coral reefs and do ocean conservation with other warriors and, um, and, uh, you know, a small pebble can ripple all the way across the world. So that's what we're doing. It's awesome. That's amazing. That's amazing. Awesome, man. Well, dude, it's been an honor. It's always an honor. Great talk. Great you know, talk. Great conversation. Um, and I look forward to doing more cool stuff. And the TV show's been amazing, you know, to watch. Oh, that's right. We got Special Forces yeah, so. SAS. I've got a yeah. new one with history coming, too. I can't tell you what it is. Uh, we've got great stuff happening, brother. I would recommend also our brothers, our men out there, yeah. show up with a full 30-inch step, best foot forward, look good, look handsome, be handsome, look strong, be strong, be your very best. You'll be surprised what, what people will do, how they receive you, and what doors will open for you. Be ready to freaking take that step. Yeah. Take that step. Yeah. And step in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Step into that. Lean into that. That vulnerability is strength. Go put mm-hmm. your best foot forward. Get crushed if you need to doing it. That's right. Do it, it better the next time, right? Because That's is- right, brother. That's right, right, brother. All right, brother. I'll let you get back to your life. Give my regards. Right on. I love you, brother. Right. I will. I'll be talking to you soon. Okay, brother. We'll team up on something. You just 100%. watch. 100%. Much love and respect. Love you, brother. Ra. See you Ra. soon. Boom. Yo, what up? I hope you guys really enjoyed that episode. Hey, listen, in order to get more out of the brand, I want to encourage you to go join us on our social media platforms and join us at protectornation.com. We post different types of content on our different platforms at different times. Uh, You'll get blog posts, you'll get videos, you'll get real world combat engagements and things like that. So stay plugged in in order to get the most out of the brand. In order to support us, also go to protectornation.com and Buy something or 
join forces with me on Patreon. You'll scroll down the homepage and you'll see the link. Uh, anything you can give counts, you know, think about whatever you would lose in your cushions or like spend on McDonald's this month, five bucks a month, whatever it is. Uh, that helps. That helps us make the world a better place by making good people dangerous. Anyways, this is Byron Rogers, protector by nature and by trade. And I'll see you on the next piece of content, whether it's a video or podcast out.